Hey, welcome inside our Los Angeles studio. This is MVA Today on YouTube. This is the fun stuff, the extra stuff, the things that we did not get to in our show uh, at 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Zach Lowe, Adrian Wojnarowski, Chinea Gumake, Kendrick Perkins, I'm Malika Andrews. In case somehow anybody missed it, Max Struess, can I, can I say the Struess is loose? You should say we the Struess. should say the Struess is loose when this happened last night. The Mavericks thought they got this all wrapped up, Chinea, and then here comes Max Struess. He was on a heat in this game so don't think that this was just luck this was skill this was design but my goodness the second lo lo longest shot in NBA history for a game winner it's a little luck <laughs> I, I mean you think it's a little I mean didn't he go seven for seven or no, something no he did okay it was an incredible shot four of four in a one minute and you know, seven seconds you know what stretch? they say Woj? luck is where preparation meets opportunity I, he had the opportunity to win it he was prepared he was hot and he got it done. Sometimes, my dad says sometimes it's better to be lucky than be good. So, you know, a little it's combination true. of all of that. But the Cavaliers, they've been playing incredibly good basketball lately, Kendrick Perkins. You were a part of this team at one point. They're second in the Eastern Conference. The gap between them and the Celtics. Do you think that they can make a real push here in the playoffs? I mean, what's a real push? A real push is to get like, to what's, the... But, Conference don't Malika, don't let them be, you know what I'm saying, instigators in between you and I. But Never. I'm saying what you ask me, what's their ceiling? I think their ceiling is the second round out, to be honest with you. I don't see them, you know, beating the Milwaukee Bucks. I don't see them beating the Boston Celtics. So like I think it's the growth of Evan Mobley for me, right? Like, is he gonna take that next leap or they're gonna allow him to continue to grow? Um, it's times that they don't even need him. Like, you know, they may finish the game with Jared Allen and Evan Mobley will be on the bench. You drafted him in the lottery. Like, this kid got a, a ceiling that, you know, could be very, very promising. So when I think about that and I think about, you know, Donovan Mitchell and his Utah-led, his Utah Jazz-led teams and how they didn't fell short, it cut, he got to show me in the postseason. I can't put too much stake in the Cavs. The most interesting part of that game last night, other than the Struce being loose, was exactly what you just said. Evan Mobley was on the bench for the last six minutes of the game until there were 30 seconds left for defensive purposes. J.B. Bickerstaff's going to have to make tough decisions about who plays with whom and when all throughout the rest of the season. That's what you have to do when you're trying to win big. This isn't about the long game. This is team is good enough to do damage now. Ceiling, look, it depends on how Milwaukee plays for the rest of the season yeah. and New York's health and Philly's health. If those situations are murky in a month and a half, this team could get to the conference finals. That's how good I think they could be. But Milwaukee seems to be writing itself. New York will hopefully get healthy. We'll see. And in that case, I agree with Perk. I think no, no, second no. round underdog. No, no, no. That's what you said. You forgot about the team you was just talking about, the Miami Heat. You ain't mentioned them? Oh, Look, the heat, the heat are coming. The heat are coming like Jaws. That's, that's so the like, noise he did. But, no, no, but oh, you did, you did, you did the sports center. It. Dunna, it's Dunna. Perk's talking about Donovan Mitchell in Utah, and people are talking about the Cleveland team in the postseason yeah. last year. Do we allow any more for growth? Do we allow for teams to get better, for rosters to improve? And you know, I talked to George Nang on my uh, podcast this week who played in Utah uh, with Donovan Mitchell, obviously with him now in Cleveland, and he talked about that, the growth, that this is a player who is more focused than ever on what's important you know what happened at the end in Utah with Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert and, and maybe there were some distractions in that environment but this is a player who is playing some of the best basketball of his career this is a team with size um, with great perimeter play and and some bench shooting now Max Struess George Nang this is a group Sam Merrill uh, this is a group that uh, is improved over a year ago. Yeah. They've added to the depth of this team, and they went through it one year together in the playoffs. I, I think this is a team, uh, I don't think they're Boston, but I could absolutely see this team in a conference final and taking Boston to the limit. Yeah, they've messed around and found something really good, and I say that seriously, even though it sounds funny, because, you know, Woj, you alluded to it. When Donovan Mitchell left Utah, I felt like it was more about leaving Utah than it was, I want to play for the Cavaliers. Sure. But well, now they have... Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, you, you know, yeah. it's true. But I think, you know, we never thought that this might be the end destination for Donovan Mitchell. People have always said, oh, maybe we can get him in New York. There've, there's always been this idea that, okay, this could work out in this scenario, but really, he might want to go elsewhere. 
he's found himself a beautiful home. They found themselves a hierarchy on this team. Um, you know, the last few years, in and out between Garland and Mitchell, they both produced all-star seasons. I like what they have built. And then I think a lot of times people struggle in looking at these teams, and I think it's because there's a lot of parallels to the Timberwolves on why it has worked to play two bigs. Because you have Carl Anthony Towns stretching the floor. Yep. With the Cavs and Mobley, to your point, <clears throat> uh, Perk, he needs to find that niche of development that allows him to stay on the floor. Both teams are overperforming than what we expected, but like the Timberwolves have perfected it. Now we're looking for the growth points for the Cavs to see if they're able to get that growth from Mobley so that they feel untouchable so they can really make a push, but, push but, in the East. But my pushback to the point where Woj brought up, um, do we allow teams to grow anymore? Well, that's not actually all on the teams, right? Because players have been the ones that been forcing their way out. So, like, they don't allow it to happen. They don't want to sit and be patient. They want to go to another destination. They're the ones that are actually working out with other superstars around the league and having these conversations, and all of a sudden, oh, he won out. Like, they're not, they're not allowing it to happen. And so when I look at the Cavs, I'm like, Sooner or later, right, it's either going to be, you know, Darius Garland or it's going <clears> to be Donovan Mitchell. That's just me, you know, thinking. I, I, I don't think it's a perfect fit. I really don't. I think Darius Garland needs the ball in his hands to be great, and that's okay. Just like James Harden, he needed to get out of Tyrese Maxey's way so that Tyrese Maxey could be great. Everything in this league is temporary. <laughs> <laughs> it's a temporary league. Rosters are temporary. Yeah. Yeah. When I say growth, I, th I think <coughs> last year to this year, Donovan Mitchell's individual growth. But you're right on Evan Mobley. I think the step that gets from Cleveland, that would get Cleveland from, you know, legit Eastern contender to legitimate championship contender is Evan Mobley becoming the all-NBA player. I think we all yep. thought he was going to mm -hmm. be and could still be. Uh, when he came into the league. When we had Donovan Mitchell on NBA Today uh, a couple of weeks ago, I asked him if he thought that this was the best team that he had ever played on. And he thought about it for a second, and he said that some of those teams in Utah, he felt pretty good about. He felt like they really had a shot here. But when you look at how all the pieces fit, he feels just about as good about this team as any other one. Do you think this is the best team he's played on? I'd have to go back to that Utah team that was the number one seed with Quinn Snyder as the coach. Didn't they win 60 games one year or something close yeah. to 60 games? I think that team was probably better. But look, it's Evan Mobley is 22 years old. Like, if he's going to become a good enough jump shooter to play with Jared Allen and, and really play down the stretch of games, that was going to always take a little longer than today, today, today. Everybody wants it today. That's not going to come today for Evan Mobley. But... The Cavs are ready today, and the luxury that they have, luxury, Perk's word of the day, yeah. <laughs> luxury is that they can actually put Evan Mobley or Jared Allen on the bench, and they do. They stagger their minutes, and they have Karis LeVert, Max Struess, Niang. They have enough. Okoro has been awesome for them all season, mm -hmm. Isaac Okoro. They have enough wings to play small ball lineups to get through this period and try to win today because they're good right now. And they're looking at the East, and there's real opportunity, and that's where I side with Woj on this one because they have the defense. They have Donovan doing what he's done, become an all-star. You know, they have Garland giving you 18 points per game. They have what it takes. If they're playing their brand of basketball, which last year the criticism was that they started off hot and they fizzled out down the stretch. Right. Now the reverse is happening. You know, they sort of took some time to find their groove, and now they're clicking on all cylinders. The East is wide open. And this has been really a master class in small market team building mm -hmm. for, for what Kobe Altman, Mike Gansey have done through the draft, through trades, uh, through player development, and, you know, with J.B. Bickerstaff, their head coach. Th this is about as, as good of a job you can do in a small market because it's very rare that players like Donovan Mitchell <laughs> become available in right. trades. And they went and got him in a deal and uh, – they're trying to maximize this window now uh, with him as their best player. The Cavaliers, the number two seed Ooh. in the Eastern Conference right now. Before we go, I have a fun fact. Okay. So in 2016, we know Steph Curry hit that insane game winner, right, on February 27th. We know that Max Struess on February 27th hit that game winner that we all saw. Dwayne Wade, the one where he jumped up on the scorer's table after, guess what date that happened on? 
February 27th. What the heck is going Something on? Something in the water. Is it a leap year thing? Yeah, oh. maybe, maybe <laughs> it's like. I'm, I'm, marking my I'm marking my calendar now. February 27th. Put <laughs> for next year. Calendar for next year. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us here on NBA Today on YouTube. You can catch us at 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. We'll see you there.